Kathleen Barger. I'm one of the humanities teachers at wonderful Winton Woods Middle School, and I am here with our cultural fair. The kids actually designed this themselves. They made a proposal, and we had the kids pitch it to the other kids, and they chose this format. They could do it during the day. They could do it after school. They could do it in the evening. They chose during conferences because they thought they'd get the most appeal. And then they decided which cultures they were going to do. And they chose to do the cultures that are represented here at Wynwood's Middle School. So they decided what they were going to show and what they're going to do. And they're going to culminate with a celebration later next week where they are sharing the food of the different cultures. So we're really proud of how they've really pitched in for this. Here we have our flags about um, Egypt and Turkey and Iran and Iraq and other countries from the Middle East. Right here, we have some of the main cities of where they live and how, how like how they um, react because depending on where they live is how they eat. Like if they live by the water, they get a lot of fish. seafood. Yeah, the main is fish. Right here, we have the main modern day Middle Eastern right here. Over there, we have ancient Middle East, like a map of how they look back in as ancient well as times. The yes. And here we have some of the main foods, including Turkish coffee. And we have the religion. Um, the three main religions are Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Um, one thing that I learned about doing this project is how the Middle Eastern really relate to their religion and how dance, is, dance and music is a really big part of it. Because I never knew that when you dance to Middle Eastern music, you had to be so graceful and into the music. So I really learned a lot on how to actually dance to the music when you hear it and be really open-minded to it. That's one, thing one thing I learned is simply, she's from Egypt. <laughs> Okay, there you go. That's good. Um, one thing I learned is that they have four main religions. I never knew that. I thought they only had Muslim, okay. but I've learned that they have four main religions. Yeah. Hi, I'm Bria from Wentworth Middle School, and for our cultural fair, we have African culture. Um, so for the food, it's like a very diverse continent. Uh, there's a lot of different types of food. There's um, they're most local like commonly known for having lots of rices and also different styles like they have like different techniques to make this things um, Africa is also the world's second largest continent and it's a very it's like very different from North America's um, the best part of the project was we got to learn more about a different culture that we didn't know much about what we learned was that Africa is a very diverse continent and that it's it's very unique and different from North America and all the other continents. Okay, my name is Whitney, and our presentation was on North America. North America consists of Mexico, Canada, and the United States of America. Um, the religion of the USA. Religion in the United States is have a lot of different religious beliefs and practices. The religion of Canada, uh, Canada has no official religion. Uh, the religion of Mexico it has the San, Santa Marite religion. Um, the music dance to USA, there are three types of common dances, African American dance, swing dance, and modern dance. The music dance of Canada, um, there are two types of common dances, ballet and modern dance. Music dance of Mexico, the most popular dance is the folk dance. I think overall we learned from this project from this project is that even though all three countries are in the same continent, they're all very different. I am Nyla Dorson, and I'm talking about Hispanic culture. Hi, um, I'm Rachel Hughes. Um, I am along talking with Nyla with about this Hispanic culture. Um, our three major countries we did were Mexico, the Dominican, and Cuban. Um, we have our three top Hispanic music artists. We have Selena, which is playing right now, um, Daddy Yankee, and Leslie Grace. Um, we have Hispanic food. We have a dessert that we talked about called flan, which is a sponge cake or custard. 
Um, let Nyla talk now. Flan is more of a dessert than a breakfast, but some people eat it whenever they want. It's, it has like a syrup poured over it, so it's kind of spongy-like. Um, most Catholics are, I mean, most Hispanics are Catholic. They believe that health is a gift from God, and if you deny it or take it for granted, it's a sin. And they make you wear medallions and amulets inside their home so that you know that you're with the Lord every day of your life. In major cities, modern Mexican clothing does not differ from the clothes that we wear every day. Thanks to the fact that urban lifestyles change your way of clothing, like loud color t-shirt, loud, loud color t-shirts, jeans, sne and sneakers. But that changes a lot when you go into smaller towns, like where you see mo more modern clothing that give you a native feeling. Um, you can find traditional Hispanic clothing in many varieties. It can be distinguished by gender, social, um, social status, and ethnic groups. Like garments worn by women might differ from those worn by men. I learned that Hispanics are mostly Catholic. I thought they were like, each of them were like a different religion. Like maybe they were Buddhist or just Christians. Okay. Wow, I learned a lot. <laughs> Like, I never knew how Hispanic culture it affects people. Like, what they eat, what they wear, the music they listen to, everything is different from what I do or what people around me do. We're doing um, the Asian culture, and we was doing China, India, Japan, and South Korea. Recreational things that people in China do are acrobatics, martial arts, kite flying, and biking. The main religion in China is Taoism. 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 The main foods in China are noodles and chicken. Chicken. Japan. The most popular recreational things in Japan are sumo, wrestling, and karate. The main religion in Japan is Shinto. The most popular food is sushi. South Korea, one of the most popular recreation things to do in South Korea is skiing. The main religion in South Korea is Buddhism. The popular foods in South Korea is kimchi, which is rice and stew. India, the most popular recreation in India is theater. The religion is Hinduism. The most popular food is butter chicken. I didn't know that the Great Wall of China took 200 years to build. Well, my name is Rashawn, and we're doing our project on the Pacific Islanders. My name is Faye, and like they very into all the dancing and all the sports. They're also known to have many islands and many places like. Hawaiian is part of the Pacific Islanders and some parts of Australia. Um, like one of their major sports is football. And I just thought that was like in like America and some other parts of the country. That there were more, that there was like a lot of islands in the Pacific Islanders. I learned that one of the popular traditions is dancing. My name is Emily Adelson, and this is the project on Europe. This is like the foods and drinks. Um, in France, they have like different types of meats, potatoes, wines, chickens. They have their own wonderful sauces, uh, uh, cheeses, and se seasons, uh, seasoned sausages. <laughs> uh, my name is Mario Mendoza, and this is Europe's. Uh, this video is about Europe's. Um, geography and here's the geographies for different countries from Europe for example Germany these are the four that I got out Germany uh, France Italy and Portugal uh, Germany the largest religion in Germany is Roman Catholic I know that before what I learned is that they like certain parts eat different foods and different fish and meats. That's one thing I didn't know about Europe. Okay. I'm Moana and I'm from Wentworth Middle School and we're presenting Native American culture.
Indians tend to focus on nature as a religion. For example, landscape, animals, plants, and other environmental environments. Native American religion includes a number of ceremonies, tradition, and a number of practices. The Native Americans do, ha do have gods that they practice their communication with. I learned that they have many different fashions and many different ways of doing things, and they have a very unique tradition by the way that they, the, by the way that they do things on a, on a daily basis. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the orchestra room, which was formerly called the multipurpose room, but we're going to call it the orchestra room from now on, uh, just so we're clear. This is the fifth grade orchestra class, all our beginning students this year. It's the largest class ever in the history of Winton Woods, I think. Is that right, Mrs. Bell? Yes. 60 students or more. Um, it's sort of weird. I know we have more than 60, but they're not all showing up on my record, so I've got to find them. But anyway, there are 60 kids in this room. Uh, next year, we're going to have to move into a different space because we're not going to have enough room. And we're going to play just a couple songs for you that we've started working on to um, get started. And what we're doing today is we're going to pizzicato, which is an Italian word that means to pluck the strings. Um, and the reason we start with pizzicato is because we're, we're really talking about combining a bunch of different skills in one moment. We're talking about listening skills, reading skills, and physical skills. Three in one. And for some of your kids, I mean this in the best way, that was really hard for them. We got some goofy kids in this room, right? <laughs> so some of them were like, what do I have to do with my fingers? And they have to move their fingers. And we've come a long way in just 12 classes, which is, I think, what we've had. And this is just our, our dive right in and, and get in the habit of performing. Okay, so we're going to start with a little song called Mix Them Up, which plays two of our open strings. Maria Adamas. Mine's Ariana Moore. Can you tell us why you joined orchestra? Because I think string instruments are fun and I would like to try one out. Because most of my family plays instruments and the only instrument they haven't played is the violin. What's your favorite thing about music so far? Um, I like switching my notes. I just like playing with the strings at home. How do you think music is going to help you in the future? Um, it could help me with being, becoming a good viola player and becoming famous. It could help me go to college and get a degree for playing the violin. Did you guys have fun today at your concert? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Thanks. So the next song is called Rolling Along. Who can tell us what the song actually is? Not Twinkle, Twinkle. Oh, Mary, had a Mary had a little lamb. Okay, so we're going to play Mary Had a Little Lamb for you all. Nineteen, rolling along. Trayvon, Keyshawn, Lashanti. 
and why did you join orchestra? Because when I, when I was little, I, my brother used to always bring a violin home, and I used to play with it with him. And he, he used to think it was—I used to think it was a a, a, a guitar, but it wasn't. And he told me it was a violin. And then since then, I've been practicing with a violin. I thought it would be fun. <laughs> I like the violin because my mom, she played the violin when she was little, and when they came into our class in fourth grade, I heard them playing it, and I liked the sound of it. So we use um, this CD track in class a lot, and the reason we do that is to give the kids a, a harmonic support so that they can hear the right notes, um, but also a rhythmic support so that they're starting to feel time inside of their bodies, and it really helps them to play together. Um, and that's the real challenge. It's not just moving your fingers to what it says on the page, but actually doing it together at exactly the right time and exactly the right sound. Um, so we're talking about some really high levels of coordination that we have to develop. Um, we're going to play a song called Seminole Chant now, um, which is inspired by the Seminole Native American tribe from Florida, which is where I'm from. So we got to talk about Native Americans when we first learned this song, and we practiced a little bit of call and response, which is a very authentic music form. Uh, so we're going to play Seminole Chant. Twenty one seven old champ. teachers and we we get we play jokes around with each other we help each other where our work and if somebody mess up he ask, they ask for help and we help them <laughs> um, my favorite thing is learning new songs and learning how to or well, we're learning how to control the bow this next piece is called Light We Row, um, and it was a kind of milestone for us because it involves two different strings of the instrument. The kids actually have to cross over, and we're talking about looking at an object that's really close in your field of vision and reading something on the page behind it. So, again, a real coordination issue in this song, but they did fantastic. So it's called Light We Row. You might recognize the tune. 22, Essential Elements Quiz, Lightly Row. Orchestra because orchestra is a good thing, and plus you you can get you, you you can get good things like one day you probably somebody probably send you an invite to an orchestra and to do like a, a song and if you get it right you can play it like with famous people and stuff so I think Fortnite should do it. Um, so you may have noticed that we all freeze at the end of the song and we wait until the song is over and it's something we've been practicing very hard um, because the other element, aside from coordination and, and teamwork that we're working on, is just discipline and having the discipline to do things a specific way and the right way every time. Um, and those are obviously skills that transfer over to learning and studying, right? 
or be disciplined in your learning and your study. So, dressing up for a concert and freezing all together, those are things that we do out of habit, and eventually it sticks and you have little people who grow up into big people with excellent habits. I wear bow ties almost every day to work because I wear them when I perform. And it's just become part of my life. Okay. So here we go, ready? We're gonna play Caribbean Island. Caribbean. Twenty six Caribbean Island. Olympic high jump and they call it Olympic high jump because we're jumping from a really low note to a high note and they're both called the same thing both these notes are called D's and for these kiddos they were like what are you talking about the first time because they, they want one thing to be one thing all the time so for them to split that up and to realize that hey it looks higher on the page it sounds higher we're starting to correlate uh, visuals so we're talking about graphs and things that we translate from math because music, I don't know if you know this, is actually just a stylized graph that we read. And we just read it all the time. No one really knows that, but it's a graph. And we just see the time and the rhythm move in real time. All right, we're going to play Olympic High Jump. And this is our last song. I love it because it's got an 80s rock kind of feel to it. I appeal to some of you guys. Here we go. Twenty-seven, Olympic High Jump. My name is Felipe Morales. I'm the orchestra teacher here for Winton Woods. Uh, today was our first recital for fifth graders, which they played after only 12 lessons on their instruments. Uh, we do it that early so that they get in the habit of performing and they get over their butterflies and they really grow to love playing their music. Um, one of the things that I really stressed today at our recital was that we're talking about not just playing songs and making pretty sounds, but also coordinating a bunch of different skills while playing music. You've got reading and literacy, you've got kinesthetic movement, the physical movement of your body, and then also listening and making sure everything is working together in real time. That's a really complex set of skills for kids to be working on, um, and that's why music shows results in the classroom as well. So you have 60 kids participating in orchestra this year. It's the largest class ever at Winton Woods. And you're going to have 60 kids that are going to be stronger students and stronger people for the discipline and the skills that they're going to build in orchestra. So if you're in fourth grade, I encourage you to consider joining a music program, whether it's orchestra or band. And we'll see you next year at the Winton Woods Intermediate School. Thank you.